Second Chronicles, can we just stand for it? Hi, welcome once again to Coastwide Church Victory Bible Studies. I tell you, I believe that you are going to be excited about tonight. I think by the time uh, 30 minutes goes, you're going to be just like, wow, I'm so glad that I joined in with that study tonight. Or, well, I hope you're going to be anyway. So let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you. We just honour you so much. The most wonderful, wonderful person, the kindest, most generous and loving person that we could ever, ever know. And so we yield ourselves to you right now. We just open our heart to you and make sure that there's nothing that is going to hinder your word taking root in our heart tonight and bearing forth a great harvest. And so, Father, we thank you, we honor you, and we give you all of the praise and all of the glory for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. So tonight and then again on Thursday night, we're going to talk about the kingdom of God and that will be the end of the kingdom of God series. And so Thursday night, I'm going to share some things with you and then take some time to recap on a whole bunch of the things that we've been sharing with you. But tonight I want to just take a whole bunch of scriptures and read them and then comment just a little bit on each one of them. So remember this, that Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you. We don't have to go looking for the kingdom of God out there somewhere out in the sweet by and by. But the kingdom of God is on the inside of you. And so we don't have to go looking for it. Jesus said to us to seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. And then everything, everything we need will be added to us. Amen. And so let's go on. We're going to look tonight at Matthew chapter 13. And we're going to read from verse 44 through to 46. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid. And for joy over it, he goes and he sells all that he has and he buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls, who when he has found one pearl of great price, he went and he sold all that he had and bought it. Notice this, that he's saying that the kingdom of heaven is like treasure. He, he's saying that the kingdom of heaven is absolutely valuable to you and me. 
And it's important that we understand how valuable the kingdom of God is. That if we're coming from, we're speaking, we're thinking, our attitudes, our actions are all coming from a kingdom of God perspective, that's a treasure. That is an absolute treasure. It's not hidden from you, but it's hidden for you. And it says this, that when this man finds this treasure, it says for joy. I want to ask you, how excited are you that you are in the kingdom and that you can also operate the kingdom of God in your life? Is there, is there real joy? Are you really excited about the whole prospect of you being able to speak and to live and to act and to have attitudes that are coming from the kingdom of God, not this world system. I don't know whether you've noticed it, but this whole world system, my gosh, it changes so much. It changes from one day to the next. And, and you just, how can you have faith in something that is changing all of the time? You can't. But the kingdom of God is rock solid. The kingdom of God is steady. The kingdom of God does not change from day to day, week to week, month to month, or year to year. It is absolutely the same. So, so when you have faith in the kingdom and you're speaking words of faith, you know that they are going to manifest what you're believing because the kingdom doesn't change. So if you were believing for something 20 years ago, you can continue to believe God for the same thing again today because the word does not change. The kingdom does not change. The manifestation from the kingdom does not change in any way. And so it says this, that this man, he, he's, he's number one, he sees it as a treasure. The second thing is that he is full of joy. He's excited about this kingdom. And so what does he do? He sells all that he has. He sells everything he has so he can get this treasure, this kingdom. To, to me, that speaks this. That speaks of committed fully to the kingdom of God. He's not committed to anything else, but he's committed fully to the kingdom of God. He sets his heart, he sets his finances, he sets his attitude, his mouth, his whole being he's setting on this kingdom of God because he understands that it's a treasure and so he fully commits to it. That's what it says again in 45 and 46. It says again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls who when he had found one pearl of great price went and sold all that he had and bought it. He's talking about this total commitment, putting the kingdom of God first. Matthew 6.33 that I mentioned at the start of the study. But seek first the kingdom of God. To do that first, seek the way the kingdom works, the way the kingdom operates, life in the kingdom, thinking out of the kingdom. And when we seek that first, everything's going to be great. Everything's going to be fine. See, everything you need is in the kingdom of God. Let me say that again. Everything you need is in the kingdom of God. Spiritually, emotionally, physically, it comes out of the kingdom. How do I know that? Because he said to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things... If you go back to the verses before that, he's talking about life itself. And so he's saying all of these things, everything you need is going to come out of the kingdom. So why do we spend so much time trying to get things from this worldly system? You know, you have to work. The Bible says you need to work. But it doesn't say that you need to have a second or a third or a fourth job. It doesn't say that you've, you've got to kind of keep all your money to yourself and you're never generous to be a blessing to someone else. Because that's thinking from the world's kingdom. And so the kingdom of God is saying this, that if you'll seek it first, everything you need, everything you need for security in life, for the power of God, for the love, for, for all of this, all of the material possessions, all of that will come out of the kingdom of God, if we will seek it first. Powerful principle, really is. So in Matthew chapter 7, 
going to read verse 21 through to 23. He says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, done many wonders in your name? Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. See, let, let's look at this. Accepting Christ gives you the right to enter the kingdom. Doing the will of the Father allows you to enter the kingdom, to live in it, to be a part of it, to, to work the kingdom of God. It's, it's very much like this. When I was 17 years old, I, I went and I got a driver's license. I passed the test and they gave me this little piece of card that, that said that that is my driver's license, that it gives me the right to drive. Now, that doesn't mean to say that it, it allows me to drive. It doesn't mean to say that, that you know, I, I have to get into a car and be able to drive it for that to be of any value to me. So the, the piece of paper that I get, now it's a piece of plastic, but, but that driver's license gives me the right to drive a car, but I actually have to get into a car, start it, put it in gear, and drive that car for that license to be of value to me. See, here we're finding this. Accepting Christ, it gives us the right to enter the kingdom, but then doing the will of the Father allows us to enter. It's what allows us to come into and to start to live by and start to work and start to receive the manifestations from the kingdom of God. Love, generosity, forgiveness, all of these things that come from the kingdom, we, we have to be doing the will of the Father for all of that to happen in our lives. Because see, if, 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 we're, not, if we're not forgiving people, then that's part of the kingdom that's not going to be operating for us in our lives. And, and, and all of this, all of this is built on in intimacy. Remember we just read the, this part of the, the scripture that says this. And, and it says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, done many wonders in your name? And Jesus said this, and then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Jesus will declare that I never knew you. What is that? That is intimacy. See, they thought they were in the kingdom, but they had obviously not accepted Christ and then been doing the will of the Father. They'd just been doing their own deal, living their own way, living by their own standards. And so they're coming to Jesus and they're going, oh, but Jesus, we've done all of these marvelous things in your name. See, the name of Jesus carries power in it. It's not what you do, it's the name. And so he's saying here, to, listen, I never knew you guys. Get, get out from here. You're, you're not coming into this kingdom. And then he says this, you're lawless. What is lawlessness? Lawlessness is doing your own thing and not what the word and the will of God is. He's saying that, that you who practice lawlessness, so it's not just doing something wrong every now and then. It's a lifestyle. You, you live this lifestyle. You're practicing this lawlessness all of the time. And he's saying, look, you've got a right to enter the kingdom, but you can't work in the kingdom by doing your own thing by living your own life in any way. But listen to this verse. I love this verse of Scripture. I really enjoy it. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 12. Matthew 11 and verse 12. And he says, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. It's just one of those verses of scripture that, that, that theologians over the centuries 
have struggled with to try and understand it and try to work it out. And, and, and the kingdom of God suffers violence? Like, like how can it, the kingdom be suffering violence? Well, well, it says this, the violent will take it by force. And so the kingdom is open and available for us, but yet there must be, listen to this word now, this is what violence means, an intensity about us entering and operating in the kingdom. There needs to be an intensity in our life about being in the kingdom. Things don't just happen automatically because we're in the kingdom. You've got to work the kingdom principles. Bible says this, what you believe in your heart, your innermost being, your belly, and you say with your mouth is literally what you'll get. That's paraphrasing it, is what you'll get. So you believe it, you say it, you'll get it. That is the kingdom. But there are, there are principalities that are out here, powers of hell, that are trying to stop us. They're trying to hinder you and I operating this kingdom. They're trying to stop the kingdom from operating. Remember in the book of Daniel, the Bible says Daniel prayed for 21 days. And then on the 21st day, an angel came and brought the breakthrough that he was believing God for. And the angel said this to him, said, Daniel, from the first day you prayed, your prayer was answered. And then he says this, but the prince of Grecia, I think it was, either Persia or Grecia, one of those two, uh, hindered me and stopped me getting through to you. But because Daniel was, was there and he was intensely praying and intensely standing up in faith, then those powers of darkness were broken down and the answer was released through to him. And there's a powerful principle in that. To understand that the, the kingdom of heaven is suffering this, this violence, this intensity, and those who are violent or intense will take it by force. I'm, I'm really quite convinced, church, that, that we have the victory and now we have to enforce that victory. And we have to be intense about it because the, the violent are taking the kingdom by force. I am intense about believing God for everything that he has said I can have. Yes, he says that we are to rest in the word, but that rest is not just sitting around twiddling your thumbs, kind of just doing nothing. No, no, there's this place of rest where I am resting in the power of the word of God to bring the manifestations of that kingdom to pass in and through my life. We, we drive against it with force. We come against the powers of darkness that are trying to stop the kingdom manifesting in our lives and bringing that breakout that we need. The, the violent taking it by force. We, we've got to become really intense about believing this word and we've got to become violent with our thoughts because our thoughts will start to run off. Like, could you imagine Daniel? Here's Daniel praying for 21 days. Could you imagine the thoughts that he had on the 20th day? Just like you and I have. I wonder if God's going to answer me. I wonder if God has actually heard me and if he's going to bother to answer me or not. But he's stuck there with intensity, believing that the word of God is true. And so with that intensity, the next day, the 21st day, the angel broke through and he brought the answer that Daniel needed in his life. You might be so close to the breakthrough answer that you are needing in your life. You might be just so close. You might be just like, like when your fingers touch here, then, then that's the answer. And you might be like so close that just another few minutes, another hour, or another day, and your breakthrough is there. And so you've got to be intense about standing there in faith. 
not allowing the attitudes of your heart, the words of other people, your own thoughts to be able to come and stop you and hinder you and go, oh, God's not hearing you, you might as well just give up. We've all had those kinds of thoughts. And so we need to be really intense. So I, I want to read it like this. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers intensity and the intense take it by force. Being, being absolutely focused on believing, focused on what God has said we can have and standing there with this intensity about ourselves that that's mine, I have it, and that's all there is to it. Oh, I tell you, there's such a pro profound key in that verse of Scripture for us because I don't think many are intense about the kingdom. I'm not talking about being, being stressed out and all, you know. No, no, I'm talking about being absolutely focused I believe what God said and therefore I take it and nothing will stop me from having that in the name of Jesus and believing that. Let's go to Matthew chapter 18 and verse 4. Matthew 18 and verse 4. He says, Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this little child is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Humility equals greatness in the kingdom of heaven. Humility in the world system, people just think you're just, you're just stupid or you're just, you know, if you're, if you're not going to stand there and argue with someone and demand your rights and, and so on like that. If you're not going to, oh, well, then you're just really weak. But I want to tell you, humility is strength. Absolute strength. Humility is one of the greatest attributes to living in the kingdom. Humility. Humbling yourself under the hand of God. Humbling yourself. Bringing yourself under the word under the promises of God. The opposite to humility, pride. What's pride? Pride is being full of yourself, making your own decisions, talking your own talk. And I want to tell you that that is a very, very destructive force. Humility equals greatness. Pride, the Bible says this, God said these words, God resists the proud. We'll read it in a moment. God resists the proud. And yet he says if we're humble, if we will yield ourselves to God and, and we will yield ourselves to his word, even if we don't understand something, if God says it, then that settles it. People say, well, if God said it, I believe it, that settles it. Whether you believe it or not, that settles it. You're just very smart if you do believe it. And so humility is coming into agreement with God and saying the same thing as God, believing the same thing as God says. That's humility. And he says that equals greatness. Greatness. Wow. I think of people like uh, Catherine Kuhlman, had a, 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 just an, a phenomenal healing ministry. And she said this, she was totally yielded and humbled to the Holy Spirit. Whatever he said, whatever he showed her, that's what she did and what she believed. She didn't try to do her own thing at all. And thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people had miraculous hear healings by the Holy Ghost, through that lady. Phenomenal. And yet some people say, oh no, God doesn't use women in the ministry. Well, someone must have forgot to tell God, because he does. He uses powerful women in the ministry. And so in 1 Peter 5, verses 5 through to 7, he says, Likewise, you younger people, 
Submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another. Can, can I just say this for a moment? I know some younger people who have got a gift of God on their life and, and, and they just think they know it all. Like, like they're young and they, they just know everything and doesn't matter what older people say. No, 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 I, we just know it all and we're going to do it. And then there's other younger, younger people who do what this Bible says, who submit yourself to your elders. And they are people who will flow in a powerful anointing upon their lives. From my experience, yeah, from, from young people that I've seen who will submit themselves to me and, and, and humble themselves before me, I, I've seen a powerful anointing come on their lives. Powerful stuff. Because the older people have something to teach the younger ones. What I've found is this, I, I love older people. Because they are people of value who have lived longer than me so they can speak great things into my life and help me in tremendous ways. He goes on and he says this, and be clothed with humility. Be clothed with it. Be, be known as a humble person. You don't know it all. I don't know it all. I yield myself to older people. I love listening to them and talking with them. For listen to this, for God resists the proud. So could you imagine, God's like he's got his hand out there and, and he's resisting the proud. Those who are proud, he's got his hand out resisting them, stopping them. I remember, you know, you see some of these old comedy movies and, and a little guy's coming up and he, and he wants to fight the bigger guy. And the big guy's got a longer arm reach and he puts his arm out and he puts it on the forehead of the little guy. And the little guy's there and he's swinging trying to hit the, the bigger guy. But he can't. He can't reach him. He's, he's being, the, the big guy's resisting him. Got his hand on his head resisting him. Stopping him from hitting him. And that's what is happening here. God, says, God resists the proud. But he gives grace to the humble. He empowers the humble to prosper. He, he's working with the humble. He gives them all of the grace, knowing this, that they're not perfect, but his grace will cover up those imperfections in their life. Yeah, powerful stuff. Absolutely powerful. And then he says this in verse 6, Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he might exalt you in due time. So listen, as we humble ourselves, God exalts us. We just read that, that humility equals greatness. Now he's saying this, as we humble ourselves, we bring ourselves into submission to God and our elders, then he's saying this, God will exalt us. He will exalt us. Wow. Wow. That's the key to humility. Part of that key is this, casting all of your care upon him for he cares for you. What's, what's happening in that verse? He's saying this. He's saying that if we humble ourselves under the hand of God, then God is going to exalt us. He's going to cause us to be great. And he says this, you do that by casting all of your care upon him. God doesn't want you to take care. I just, so often, I, I have people saying these words to me. They go, oh, I, I take care. Now, I try to be a little bit kind these days, and I walk away from people, and just under my breath, I go, no, thank you, I'll not take my care. I'm casting all of my care over onto Jesus because he cares for me. That is a powerful thing. That is a key to humility. Having a modest exp uh, uh, estimate of ourselves, being in submission, having a, a lowliness of mind, a, a coming under that, that not coming out thinking, wow, look at me, I'm someone great. Look what God did through me. Listen to that sermon I preached today. Wow. No, no, you're in for a fall if that's your kind of attitude. 
I know everything. No, no, I don't know everything. See, we don't need to exalt ourselves. We don't need to promote ourselves. Look at me, I'm the greatest this and I'm the greatest at that and I'm, oh, how awesome am I. We don't have to do any of that. We can just be very humble. And if someone says to you, wow, thank you, that was a wonderful thing you did, you can just say, well, thank you. I appreciate that. But in your own heart, you're giving all of the glory and the honor to God. Sometimes I have people will come to me after a message and they'll say, Pastor Shane, thank you. That was a really great message. I don't go to them, oh, we'll give all, all the glory to God. I'll give God all of the praise. And, you know, it was all God. Well, it wasn't all God. He actually used me to speak a great message. But he was the instigator of it. And so I can very quietly just say to people, well, thank you. I appreciate that. But in my own heart, I'm going, God, I give you all of the glory and all of the praise. Oh, Father, I thank you. Thank you that your word touched people's hearts today. I so appreciate it, Lord. It's just a great way to live. Allowing yourself to be humble before people. Just being submissive to those who are in leadership over you. Sometimes even if you don't agree with them, you just need to learn to be humble because you might not be right. They might not be right, but allow God to deal with it and he can exalt and he can pick up and he brings grace to the humble. Glory to God. Hey, I hope that's helped you tonight. And, and uh, I just, some of those verses just so excite me. The violent taking the kingdom by force excites me. This part of it, humility and casting all your care upon him, that, that just thrills me and truly excites me because these are ways for you and I to live in victorious living. So God bless you. Let me quickly pray for you. Father, I thank you for every one of our partners, our friends, Lord, um, all of our, our family, enemies that might be watching. We bless them tonight. And we pray in the name of Jesus that they will become kingdom of God-minded people and live out of the kingdom of God that is within them. We believe it and we receive it. We thank you for it, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey, God bless you. Appreciate you taking the time to come and hear the word of God. And uh, God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your night. Look forward to seeing you on Thursday night when we meet. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your week.